Right, today we are in 1.4, which is the first thing we're going to talk about is arithmetic combination of functions. So just like you can add and subtract and multiply and divide numbers, you can also add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions as well to come up with new functions. So for instance, f of x plus g of x would be equal to, right, I'm just doing, remember when we did f of x equals g of x, we just set them equal to each other? Though this one I'm going to add f and g. So this is f, so this is 3x plus 1, and then I'm going to add to it g, which is x squared minus 4. Now I can do a little bit of simplification here, just because I like to have my so my leading coefficient to be the biggest exponent. So here I'm going to have my x squared here in front. I only have this one x term, so I have 3x. And then I can simplify this 1 and the negative 4 together and get minus 3. And so this is f of x plus g of x. It gives me a new function, which is x squared plus 3x minus 3. All right, so that's what we call the sum. So I can also subtract them f of x minus g of x. I'm still using the same functions here, f and g. And so f of x minus g of x is 3x plus 1, and then minus, I always use parentheses when I have more than one term that I'm subtracting. I've talked about this before, x squared minus 4. And so I can clean this up a little bit too. I'm going to distribute my minus sign. I have 3x plus 1 minus x squared, and then minus minus is plus. Four. And so just rewriting them in an order that I like is x squared, there's my plus 3x, and now I have plus 5 on the end, and that is my f of x minus g of x. Let me put my equal signs in here. Okay, so really I'm just adding and subtracting and just being careful when I subtract to make sure that I'm distributing my minus sign. Okay, so I'm going to, how about if I try f of x times g of x? write it like this. I'm, I'm multiplying f of x times g of x. And so if this is the case, then I have 3x plus 1 times x squared minus 4. And I can simplify this one just by multiplying it out. Okay. So when I do that, I have 3x times x squared, so I get 3x cubed here is my first term. My outer term is 3x times minus 4, which is minus 12x. I get an inner term of 1 times x squared, which is just plain x squared. And then my last my, is positive 1 times negative 4, which is minus 4. So I can rewrite this a little bit just because I prefer my exponents to be in decreasing order, but it's not a big deal. This is just me being... This, other, this one up here would have been perfectly fine. I'm just being kind of nitpicky. Okay, so then this is, that's all I can do with it. I've just got this new function of f times g. So let's take, this time, f of x divided by g of x. Okay. So just a reminder here, there's my f, here's my g, and now I'm going to take f and I'm going to divide it by g. So this is going to give me 3x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. So this is my new f and g. Now I can't, there's nothing else that I can do with that. I mean, I can't combine anything. There's no like terms in the numerator or denominator. So this is just f divided by g. Now something that I haven't spoken about at this point is the domain of these functions. If you notice that my original f and g, neither one of f and g have a domain restriction on them. Right? If you don't know why, then you better go back and watch the domain um, lecture again. So, but f is, right, this is a linear function. There's no square root. There's no division by any variable. The same with g. And so that means that both of these have a domain of all real numbers, okay? And when I combine f and g, right, with addition, subtraction, and multiplication, none of these things either, right, have have a domain restriction on them. So because I'm not getting any square roots and I'm not getting any division by a variable. Now when I get down here to f divided by g, I have a little bit something different. Now f by itself has no domain restriction, right? And g by itself has no domain restriction, if I think of it not in this fraction. 
However, when I put G in the denominator, now I have a do domain restriction because I have a variable in the denominator here. So this would be, right, so the domain restriction in general here, we're going to talk about this more in de detail, is that G of X cannot equal zero. And so our domain restriction for this particular one would be that X squared minus four cannot equal zero. And so I'm going to solve the quadratic x squared equals zero, and I get x equals plus and minus two, right? I'm gonna take the square root of both sides and put the plus minus there. So then my domain restriction is that x cannot be negative two or two. So this has a little added piece to it. All right, so just to formally write all of these things out here, right, so these are, arithmetic combinations, right? Maybe I should write that up here. Of functions. Right? Literally, we're just using arithmetic to combine them. So, and there's different ways to write it. So I have written in my first examples this f of x plus g of x, but an alternate way to write it is f plus g of x. And the difference, right, is just f of x minus g of x, but you can also write it as f minus g of x. And then my product is f of x times g of x for f g of x. And my quotient f divided by g of x can be also thought of as f of x divided by g of x. And with the added domain restriction that g of x cannot equal zero. Okay, so the general rule of thumb when I'm combining things arithmetically the domain of an arithmetically combined function is the set of all x values that are common, meaning they overlap, to both f and g, with the additional restriction of g of x can't be zero in the case of f of x divided by g of x. So in my first example, my f and g did not have domain restrictions originally, and so when I added f and g or subtracted f and g and multiplied f and g, I did not get any additional domain restrictions. It was only when I did f divided by g that I have to take into consider the g of x cannot equal zero. One common application of arithmetic combinations is p of x equals r of x minus c of x. So maybe you've taken an economics class and you might recognize this as this is what we call a profit function. So usually we call profit functions, we just name them p of x just for, for ease. And profit is actually revenue, right? The amount of money you make minus the cost. And so this is one combination that we use quite often is profit equals revenue minus cost. So this is an application of an arithmetic combination. All right, so let me do one more example where my domain of my F and G are not all real numbers. So let's think about this for a brief moment. Now I'm not going to do all of f and, and g, I'm just going to do f divided by g, but we're, I want to think about this for a second, okay? So f of x has a domain restriction on it. I see a radical, and so it has the domain restriction that x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. G also has a domain restriction on it. It's a little bit more complicated because this has a quadratic underneath it. And so my domain restriction is at nine minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now this time I have a quadratic, so I need to think of this as nine minus x squared equals zero first. I can use my square root method and find out that x is equal to plus and minus three here. I take the square root of nine and so Let's, I want to draw these on the number line here. So x greater than or equal to negative 1 tells me negative 1 is here, and it's included. And so this is what my domain looks like here. And then when I draw my number line here, because I need to check where is this true, so I'm going to take values here, plug them back into here, and what I should find is I end up with minus plus minus. Okay. If you need to review this, then you need to go back and watch the one the lecture on inequalities. So my domain restriction here is, I'm allowed to use zero, is between, the picture is between here and here. So now f plus g, f minus g, and f times g 
I'm not going to actually write them out, what the functions are, but let's talk about their domain for a second. They all have the same domain. Okay, So these three combinations all have the same domain, and that is the places where these two domains overlap. So if I think of them on a single number line, so let's think of this for a second. So here's my negative 3. I'll put negative 1 on here. There's my 0, and here's my positive 3. Okay, so negative 1 to 0 means that I have this piece right here. And then I have negative 3 to positive 3 means I have this piece here to this piece here. Okay, so the overlap then would be, right, the places where they overlap is just here to here, right, because that's where they're overlapping. And so the domain would be basically from negative 1 here up until positive 3 here. Okay. So that means that I can use x's between positive 3 and negative 1, including them, because that's division, uh, divi or the square root of 0 is, does in fact exist. So this is my domain restriction for all three of those. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to cons reconsider this a little bit when I do f divided by g. Okay, so let's take a look at f. It's the square root of x plus 1. g is the square root of 9 minus x squared. So let's do f divided by g. All right, so that would be the square root of x plus 1. And g is the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, so again, you know, I can use this picture up here sort of as my guide. Right? This one still has a domain restriction that x has to be greater than 1, or negative 1, I should say. Right? The domain didn't change for this one. It's just that now this one right, has a little bit different domain on it because now it's in the denominator, so it can't be 0. And so places that make it 0 would have to be thrown out. So that means that really when I go to draw this piece here, this piece, right, that's then I'm, I have open circles here and here. Now, I couldn't use the negative 3 anyway because it's not part of, it doesn't overlap with this domain, right? Because negative 3 here would make this the square root of negative 2. So that part didn't matter. But that just means basically the difference between this domain and the one that goes with this one means that I just can't use this 3 on the end because the 3 on the end would make this 0. So this domain has the additional restriction, right? I can write like this. So again, right, when I'm, I'm combining them arithmetically, then, I'm com then I have the most restrictive domain of each one, and that's just the overlapping parts of it. All right, so next time we will talk about combining functions in a slightly different way.